Today, Commander, we're going to rank every single Battletech Media Mech and its most notable variant on a tier list from S to F. S being the best, F being the worst. If you watch the end, you'll learn which mechs are the very best for a mercenary company and how to use each mech as a member of an effective team. For this analysis, we use concepts from engineering, measuring each mech on an evaluation matrix, using 27 different factors split into six major categories, offense, defense, utility, logistics, cost, and availability. Kicking off our tier list is the first category of medium mech, the bodyguards. Bodyguard mechs have two jobs. First, to protect larger and more valuable mechs from flankers, and second, if there are no flankers, add their damage to the mechs they're protecting, helping them win the main fight. Let's get a nice baseline going by taking a look at the mech most people think about when considering this category, the Centurion. It's a mech that's universally available, but particularly popular in the Federated Suns. It has two advantages that suit it well for the bodyguard role. First, it has an advanced tracking system that's useful at countering light mechs. And second, it has a weapon for every range bracket, allowing to fight alongside the mechs it protects, no matter if they're long range focused or brawl focused. Unfortunately, the design also comes with two major disadvantages. First, its armor is thin on the side torsos, with a high risk of ammunition explosion on both sides. Second, it has bad logistics. Its autocannon is one of the worst ever designed suffering from frequent failures, and with a number of custom parts that are very hard to come by. These two disadvantages actually put the Centurion at slightly below average on our tier list, scoring a 4.9 and rating out to a C+. It's usable, but flawed. Not to worry, Commander. The Centurion AL variant is one I can fully endorse. It replaces the faulty autocannon with a large laser, which both improves the survivability of the design and lowers the cost of maintenance. The Centurion AL scores a 6.2 and rates to an A. Now that we have the Centurion as a baseline mech, we can use it to better understand the trade-offs of other competing designs. For example, the Federated Sun's other bodyguard mech, the Enforcer, has two piercing weapons, the Autocannon 10 and Large Laser. This makes the Enforcer better than the Centurion at puncturing the armor of larger mechs, but the Enforcer's low back armor makes it worse at defending against flankers, since it needs to position itself more carefully to prevent itself from being attacked. The Enforcer has a similar overall grade to the Centurion, which is a slightly different focus, scoring a 5.0 or a B-. The universally available Blackjack has the opposite trade-off to the Enforcer. It's relatively useless against heavy mechs because of the low damage of its AC2s, but its multiple medium lasers give it better anti-light capability than the baseline Centurion. The AC2s are so bad against other mechs, in fact, that if we do end up taking it, Commander, I'd recommend loading the AC2s with flak ammunition so the Blackjack can provide a bit of defense against aircraft. The mech rates to a C. Its variant, the DB, with two large lasers, improves offensive output, but lowers its armor a bit too much for me to be able to recommend. It's usable, but flawed, and rates to a C+. Next up is the Draconis Combine's Lancelot, which we pulled from the heavy mech tier list so we can properly compare it to other bodyguards. It has superior all-around combat performance than most mechs in this category. The bad reputation of the design is undeserved and largely comes from pilots unwilling to adapt to the realities of the Succession Wars. The original Star League version of the Lancelot was a deadly cavalry mech, with the speed of a commando and penetration similar to the Black Knight L. The downgraded Succession Wars era Lancelot available to us must instead be used as a slower bodyguard, and works if used in that capacity. It rates to a B+. Next up is Icarus II, produced by the Free Worlds League before the factory was destroyed in the First Succession War. Its jump jets and superior short-range loadout make it better suited to join aggressive heavy cavalry lances or zone-off light mechs. Lack of long-range weapons means it may struggle in lances that want to fight at a distance for an extended period of time. Still, it's quite a solid design and rates to a B. Thus far, Commander, we've looked at some relatively average performers with a few trade-offs, but there are two harder-to-get mechs in this category that I think are better overall choices. First is the rare Star League Wyvern. Originally designed as an urban warfare mech, the Wyvern is superior to the Centurion in almost every way. Like the Centurion, it's equipped for all range brackets, but on top of that, it's jump capable and has an SRM-6. This allows it to punch a hole with its large laser and then crit out the hole with follow-up missiles. Its small lasers also give it solid anti-light capability, and it's rugged, which makes maintenance much easier than the Centurion. For these qualities, the Wyvern rates to a 6.6 .6 or an A. The second overall better design is the Capella Confederation's Vindicator. While damage is a bit low, it has everything expected of a bodyguard design. Notably, it has near-perfect armor allocation and very good logistics. Jump jets also give it added flexibility in lance compositions. This successful design is unfortunately well guarded by the Capellan State. The high markups on spare parts may be difficult to stomach, but are well worth it in my opinion. The Vindicator rates above the Centurion at a 6.3 or an A on our tier list. We'll be able to get even more out of the mech by converting the design back to the experimental 1X variant. This increases damage and gives anti-infantry capability at an acceptable risk to the pilot. 
the 1x scores a bit higher at a 6.6 and also rates to an A. Now that we understand the medium mechs that fight in a more defensive role, let's take a look at the two categories of mechs that try to attack them, starting off with the scouts. Mechs in the scout role can come in both the light and medium weights, and like the name implies, are the eyes and ears of our mercenary company. They can contribute to a fight, but are overall a bit worse at it than other mechs. There are two universally available mechs that set the standard for this category. The first is the ultra-efficient Locust, and the second is the heavily armed and armored Phoenix Hawk. In order to be successful, scout mechs must have some quality that justifies taking it over the Locust, and must have some way to respond to the universally available Phoenix Hawk. What makes the Phoenix Hawk so good is its ability to move as fast as most scouts and fire a large laser. This causes big problems, as most scout designs have less than 8 armor on their legs and therefore can start to take critical hits from a single shot from the laser. Armor on the Phoenix Hawk is also very high, making it nearly impossible for most scouts to take on the Phoenix Hawk alone. In addition, the Phoenix Hawk has advanced communications gear, making it the perfect mech for a commander of a recon force. For its high damage, armor, speed, and utility, the Phoenix Hawk scores a 6.1 or an A on our tier list. The Davian 1D variant has better heat management, allowing it to shoot its large laser more often, and doesn't have ammunition in its center torso. It's an overall better design, and rates to an A+. It's an unfortunate fact, Commander, that the next few mechs simply lose to the ultra-efficient Locust. Let me show you what I mean. First is the Cicada. It does the same job as a Locust, but it costs twice as much. In addition, its legs can be crit by a single shot of a large laser, something that the Locust is protected from. There's really no reason why we should ever spend money on this mech. It rates to an F. The 3C variant, armed with a PPC and machine guns, is an interesting idea. In theory, this version of Cicada can reliably put PPC shots into its opponent's back before crit-seeking with its machine guns. The design's pathetic leg armor still makes it impossible to recommend, though. It also rates to an F. Speaking of pathetic designs, our next mech is the Assassin. While more maneuverable than the Locust, its low armor makes it very risky to use. It fights similar to the Spider. The only real way the Assassin can contribute to a fight is to land behind its opponent and kick it. Considering similarly priced, jump-capable scouts like the Javelin and Firestarter have a better defense and offense, and the Locust can scout for half the price, there's really not a reason to spend money on the Assassin either. F. The 101 variant actually has a decent weapons loadout, but the armor is still a big issue. F. The Clint is another disaster of a design. Its advanced targeting suite makes it decent at plinking away at other scouts, but the mech is a logistical nightmare. Assuming we can even find the custom parts required to maintain the Clint, they'll come at an extremely high markup. On top of that, there are many parts that no manufacturer even makes anymore. Our technicians will have to remachine standard parts to perform even basic repair and maintenance. I'm not saying we can't do it if you really want to, Commander, but sinking that many man hours into a scout mech doesn't make any sense. The Clint rates to an F. Its variant, the 1-2R, trades its jump jets for an AC-10. It has a 100% explosion chance on the left torso, in addition to the maintenance issues. F. Scout mechs in the medium class aren't all bad, though. A mech I do think has some potential is the Free Worlds League Hermes 2. It's a well-armored scout, meant to be used when sending a lighter design would be too dangerous. The improved communication system and the ability to start fires to escape is also quite useful on the utility side of things, but its weapons are really only good against other scouts. Nevertheless, the Hermes will perform. It scores a 5.0 or a B- on our tier list. The variant we absolutely need to watch out for, though, is the 2M, used by the Free Worlds League Special Forces. The refit has everything we'd want and more from a scout. Its faster engine and good striking power will give even heavy class mechs a problem. The 2M scores a 7.1 and rates to an S. Sadly, though, replacing an entire engine will be impossible without access to a dedicated factory. While the Hermes 2 refit may be out of reach for us, we may be able to recreate its characteristics in the aggregate by grouping the Phoenix Hawk into a lens with our next mech, the universally available Vulcan. Well, not the original variant anyway. The Vulcan 2T is a failure of a design. It was intended to be an anti-infantry mech, trying to combine the Firestarter with the Blackjack into a single battle mech, and fails quite spectacularly. It may make a good pair with the Firestarter in dedicated anti-infantry formations, but otherwise, we should pass on this mech. F. The variant we'd want to refit to is the 5T. Its multiple medium lasers let it counter lights and rip into Heavy's rear armor. Its flamer lets it start fires like the Hermes 2, and it can be combined with the machine gun for a bit of anti-infantry. The Vulcan 5T is a very well-rounded scout and rates to a B. When organizing a battalion or regiment size force, my recommendation would be to build scout lances around the same speed, incorporating both light and medium designs so they look something like this. 
But since we're a smaller size mercenary unit at the moment, Commander, instead of buying scout mechs, it may be better to use the next category of mechs we'll be going over instead, the cavalry mechs. Cavalry mechs are fast-moving, powerful attackers. Their job is to disrupt the battle line and range mechs, using their speed to attack vulnerable rears or sides. Their speed also means they can perform the scout role to an extent. They're slower at it, but a small size mercenary unit can use them to pull double duty reasonably well. The medium mech that defines this class is the universally available Wolverine. Its good crit damage and excellent armor lets it fearlessly maneuver into the weak spot of enemy heavies and tear out components. It also has the same advanced communication system as the Phoenix Hawk, which makes it an excellent mech for a commander who likes to lead from the front. For these very useful traits, the Wolverine scores a 6.5 or an A on the tier list. The Free Worlds League 6M is even better. The variant trades out the AC5 for a large laser, giving the 6M a piercing weapon and reduces the ammunition explosion chance. While pilots will have to learn to manage heat properly, if they're able to master the design, it's much better than the original. The Wolverine scores a 7.1 or an S. The next mech is the Federated Sun's Kintaro. Armed with three SRM-6 racks and medium lasers, its design is what's known as an SRM boat. The numerous missiles are designed to hit multiple locations on an enemy and trigger critical hits on open locations. The Kintaro's heavy armor makes it better than most SRM boats we'll be looking at later and will perform as long as the pilot ejects the left torso ammunition. The Kintaro scores a 5.5 or a B. By comparing the firepower of these two mechs to our next mech, the Shadowhawk, makes its deficiencies clear. The mech is well armored, but has too light a weapons loadout to affect the outcome of a fight at range. It's therefore best used as a shock troop, rushing forward to put immediate pressure on opponents and threatening physical attacks. This makes the Shadowhawk's fighting style risky and a bit one-dimensional. Contrary to what Comstar reports, Commander, the mech is not a good design. While you may not like me rating it so low, you don't pay me for the popular opinion. You pay me for the truth. The Shadowhawk rates to an at C. The mech rates to a C. <laughs> now that we've covered the major cavalry mechs in the medium class, let's move on to our next category, the ranged cavalry hybrids. Mechs in this category are useful in nearly any situation. They can join a unit of cavalry mechs, providing fire support during the attack, but can also join a unit of range mechs, fighting alongside them and using their speed and armor to intercept attackers. In larger formations, they're good as a commander's quick reaction force or as a rear guard if things go badly. We can see this in the Shadowhawk 2K. This better version of the Shadowhawk has the speed to accompany fast-moving cavalry lances and supports with its PPC from afar while its allies close to brawl range. It rates to a 5.5 or a B. The mech it's based off of, the Griffin, is a bit better because it hits harder with its LRM-10. It's one of the favorite mechs for highly skilled mech warriors who like to operate independently, able to pick off slower enemies at range, and be fast enough to escape a bad situation. Its weakness is that it's not really able to do much once range is close. The Griffin's Battle Fists help a bit in melee if it lands a headshot with its PPCs, but otherwise isn't very helpful. Because of its more specialist role, it often makes a better 5th or 6th mech in a formation rather than a core choice. Nevertheless, the design is powerful and rates to an A. If we wanted a more Swiss Army Knife design, we can convert our Griffins to the more powerful 1S. It's a mech that fights similarly to the successful Wolverine. The 1S also rates to an A. The mech that best demonstrates the power of a ranged cavalry mech, however, is the Trebuchet. It starts the fight at long range, its LRM-15s letting it hit as hard as a heavy mech. Then, when range is closed, it can swap to its medium lasers and contribute reasonably well to the brawl. Its successful design is shared with a number of mechs that are best played with finesse. If these types of mechs have the initiative, they can use their speed to maneuver into a range where their victim is weakest and force them to take bad trades. One of the key things to manage on the trebuchet is its thin armor on the side torsos. It's often best for pilots to fire off their long-range missiles as quickly as possible in order to lower the explosion risk. Overall, the trebuchet's excellent damage and flexibility makes it quite useful even to the smallest of mercenary units. It rates to a 5.9 or a B+. The S variant swaps its LRMs for SRMs, which makes it an SRM boat that crit seeks similar to the Kintaro. It's held back by its vulnerable side torsos and rates to a C. The Cariton Whitworth is essentially a lighter and cheaper version of the trebuchet. While it's more affordable, I'd recommend paying the extra cash for the heavier hitting Treb. The mech is still usable though, and rates to a B-. The Whitworth 1S variant is a smaller and more affordable SRM boat, like the Kintaro, and rates to a C+. A design that tries to blend the LRM and SRM launchers is our next mech, the Dervish. 
Unfortunately, it doesn't quite have enough heat sinks to support its weapons, and has a vulnerable rear. A single shot from a medium laser is able to puncture into the dervish's structure and start to risk crits. It's not quite worth the high price tag and rates to a C+. Our next mech is the Gladiator. Originally designed by the Draconis Combine, production was discontinued after the mech dishonored itself in battle. The core concepts of the design, however, are solid, and it likely inspired the later produced Panther design. This mech steps away from the LRM and medium laser skirmishing style, and uses a PPC and SRM combination instead, punching a hole into armor with a PPC first, and following up with SRMs for critical hits. Its bad reputation is largely undeserved, and its only real issue is its low back armor. It rates to a B+. The 3R variant has the same missile skirmisher design like the trebuchet and rates to a B. The Scorpion also uses a PPC and SRM combo. Built during a time when the Star League was experimenting with quads, the Scorpion's four legs give it superior mobility. Sadly, it has very low armor on the legs and side torsos, with a 100% chance to explode if it's ever crit on the left side. This massive liability makes any recommendation impossible. F. The final mech in this group is the Sentinel, used by the Lyran Commonwealth. It's an infantry support mech, usually assigned to second line garrison units. Damage is too light to affect the outcome of the mech versus mech fights we'll often find ourselves in as mercenaries, and its armor is pathetic. F. Its variant, the KB, has better firepower with a PPC, but still suffers from the low armor issue. It also rates to an F. This brings us to the unique mech category. Mechs in this category play roles different from the other mechs we've covered so far, and often don't have other peers to really compare to. The first unique mech is the Hunchback. It's a hybrid mech that fights in the battle line and linebreaker positions, either forming the front line that the unit fights around, or trying to break open the enemy battle line like a battering ram. The mech is designed around the devastating AC-20, a weapon that opens a hole in many enemies' armor with a single shot. The Hunchback's Achilles heel is its rear armor. The rear left side torso has four armor and a 100% chance of ammunition explosion. Still, the value of the AC-20 can't be ignored. The Hunchback will be quite useful if given the proper support. It rates to a B. The best variant is the 4P. It's a bodyguard mech, known affectionately as the Disco Back for its eight medium lasers. This variant still has low armor in the rear, but can no longer be destroyed by an ammunition explosion. Its multiple medium lasers make it a very consistent damage dealer, although it still must push forward into brawl range to generate value. It rates to a 7.2 or an S. Next is the Lyran Commonwealth's new mech, the Hatchetman, a cavalry ambusher hybrid. The mech was designed to be an urban defense mech, but the Commonwealth has also been experimenting with it in frontline units. While it may look intimidating, the design is really more of a novelty. Its armor is very thin, which means it will struggle to make it into melee. It also has a ridiculous price tag at 5.6 million C-bills, which is 200,000 more than a Thunderbolt. Although the idea of equipping a mech with a hatchet is interesting, it's poorly executed and a massive waste of cash. F. The third unique mech is the Crab. Built during the Star League era as a raider and guerrilla fighter, the Crab is a cavalry bodyguard hybrid and well adapted to the scarcity of the Secession Wars. Its good speed and weapons mix lets it fill nearly any role that a medium mech might be asked to. Armor is a bit light on the side torso, but with an all-energy loadout, it can't be destroyed by ammunition explosion. For its extreme flexibility and excellent logistics, the Crab scores a 7.2 or an S on our tier list. It's the closest thing to perfection for a Secession Wars era medium. With that being said, Commander, this is how all the medium mechs of 3025 raid against each other. But in order to determine which of these mechs should form the core of our mercenary companies, we need to add in our final criteria, availability. As we go through our recommendations, keep in mind there may be different opportunities depending on regional salvage available, but this is what we should generally expect. For bodyguards, our primary mechs should be the Centurion AL and the Hunchback 4P with the Wyvern and Vindicator 1X as good additions if we ever run across them. For scouts, the Phoenix Hawk 1D and Vulcan 5T will provide an excellent damage boost to the top tier scout mechs we identified in our light mech tier list, with the Hermes 2N being an unlikely but notable pickup. Until we reach battalion size or larger though, we may want to rely on cavalry mechs who can scout reasonably well but also have better damage. The best picks here are the Wolverine 6M and Griffin 1S, with the Kintaro being a good SRM boat if we can find it. If we can't, I'd recommend looking at the Javelin 10N from the Light Mech class rather than pay for any of the Medium class SRM users. As these cavalry mechs move in, they should be supported by our ranged cavalry hybrids, the Griffin 1N or Trebuchet 5N, 
with the Gladiator being a rare but good find. The Trebuchet 5 then can also be used as a bodyguard if it fights a bit more conservatively. For our unique mechs, even though it's vulnerable from the rear, it's hard to argue with the value of the Hunchback 4G's AC-20, and we shouldn't hesitate to buy any crabs, as they're quite possibly the best all-rounder medium mech available to us. Thank you for watching! If you'd like a deeper dive on how to pilot some of the mechs we've covered and improve builds for them, please see the commander guides on this channel. Yeah, we ran out of patience for your love.